7, we're going to call this regular meeting of the Chavanaugh Park City Council to order. The Pledge of Allegiance will be met, led by Maggie, and Buddy will lead us in the invocation. If y'all would all please rise. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to call people together in support of our community. We thank you for each and every one who is present here today. You have blessed us with supportive stewards who seek what's best for our community of Chavano Park. And we thank you most for all of you being here in our midst. Dear God, help us supply your wisdom as we decide on certain matters and let your presence be made known and lead us through the decisions we make today. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, item number three, citizens to be heard. There are no citizens to be heard, which brings us to item number four, council member comments. Lee. Gratefully, we have cooler weather at long last um, and the promise of rain in our near future for which I am personally very grateful. Thank you, Lee. Pete. Yeah, I just wanna welcome everybody here and, and I wanna wish a special congratulations to Bill. So uh, Bill on Saturday celebrated his 10 years with, uh, with Chavano Park. So I, I, think, I think that's quite an accomplishment. And, uh, and, and I was talking to Bill one day, and, and I, I think most of you know that Bill was the commander at, at Fort Hood. And uh, we were talking about the differences between Fort Hood and Chavano Park. He says, Pete, he says, you know, some days, he said, managing Chavano is a lot harder than managing Fort Hood. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, so thank you, Bill, for all that you do for Chavano Park. Conrad. Oh, good to see everyone. I mean, we got at least half the seats full. That's nice. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank Bill for all he does for this city. Um, it's really good that we have him. And uh, welcome, everybody. Maggie. Me? Well, I just want to, it's really nice to see so many folks here and uh, that have done so many things for the city. Uh, reminder. I, it's not up there now. Trunk or treat coming this <laughs> Sunday from four to six. I mean, that has been such a fun event for our city. And I also want to acknowledge our city manager, Bill. Not only has he been here for 10 wonderful years, but he has two pecans off his pecan tree. Now, <laughs> get up there. Mayor, you and Bill have your picture taken with those pecans. <laughs> Curtis, you need to take their picture. This goes down in infamy. So, well, thank you. <laughs> History, infamy, yes. <laughs> yes. Buddy. Welcome, everyone. And, and Bill, thank you for your service to the community. We, we really appreciate it. I'm sure the citizens do as well. Thank you. Uh, and Bill, I normally don't comment during the council members' comments, <laughs> uh, but uh, ditto on all of that. It's been an extremely productive 10 years. We've accomplished more in these 10 years than we have in the previous 20 years that I worked with the city of Chavano Park. So uh, thank you for all that you've done and continue to do for our community. And I, and I do appreciate Conrad getting your agreement to continue on for another 10 years. So we're all <laughs> looking forward to working with you. Well, it's been a great team uh, and it's a team effort and I've had a tremendous support from the city council and my uh, directors and all the subordinates associated with the employees do a fantastic job of serving the community, and so that makes it a whole lot easier. So thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, now we're going to proclamations, commendations, and announcements without objection. I'm, I will stray from the order that it's listed. Uh, the first item we're going to recognize is Prior Prevention Month. We have a proclamation here. Chief, if you would come forward and talk to us a little bit about prior fire prevention, and then if we could get a picture with you real quickly. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, just a little bit about Fire Prevention Week. Fire Prevention Week typically happens the second week in October every year. Uh, this day is significant because it dates back to the Great Chicago Fire that occurred in 1871. Um, that fire raged for three days and decimated most of the city. And seeing the significance of education and, and teaching our, our residents and everybody 
uh, the U.S. Fire Administration, along with the National Fire Protection Association, created Fire Prevention Week and Fire Prevention Month. So every year there's a new, uh, a new lesson to be learned, a new theme for that. And this year it happens to be uh, cooking safety starts with you. Pay attention to fire prevention. So that was the focus of this year's uh, poster contest that happened during National Night Out. And it's also been the theme that we've been teaching to the, to the youngsters as we go out and, and do education in the city. Uh, we're very fortunate uh, that here in Chavano Park that I got to knock on wood that um, our fires are few and far between. We tend to go and do more firefighting outside our city, assisting our neighboring departments. And that's a, that's a blessing. We're, we're truly blessed to be here and to have uh, safe residents and safe homes. So uh, it's something's working and it, it, it's good. So, uh, but everybody's always welcome to stop by the firehouse anytime. Um, we love to have the, the kiddos visit, but adults as well. And um, I'm actually always pl pleasantly surprised when the, the parents come with the kids. Um, we tend to get great questions from the kids always, but then we get good questions as well from the adults. And it's, it's always fun. And it's uh, something that we really enjoy doing. So thank you very much. We appreciate that. Our next item on the agenda is recognition of breast cancer awareness month we're very fortunate this uh this council meeting to have rosemary grobau dr jennifer cook and board members laura bowers and sandy stanford yes ma'am if you would say a few things about breast cancer awareness month sandy sends her regrets and jerry warden our president also was uh, not able to attend but we have uh, Sharon Holtz, who is also one of our board members. Sharon, thank we, you for being with us. We are so excited, literally, that Chavano Park has done a proclamation for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and y'all are the only ones that I'm aware of in San Antonio. So, kudos to you, and thank you very much. Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation was founded in 1993 by breast cancer survivors. And we are uh, 501c3, we are, all of our monies that received are donations, and all of the money stays local here in San Antonio. Our big goal is education, awareness about breast cancer and how to prevent it. We also um, put on education programs. A major contribution that we have is with the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium that is held annually here in San Antonio um, on the first week in December. It is a international conference where all of the movers and shakers and researchers um, with cutting edge research to report on for breast cancer. And our Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation, we run an advocate uh, education program and uh, it is to take the scientific information and digest it down and comment on it for advocates who may or may not be healthcare professionals, who may be individuals who are interested in breast cancer. We don't charge for that attendance at that. Uh, it's down at the convention center. We also run a helpline, and our helpline is for individuals to call in with questions about breast cancer, and particularly if they, uh, early diagnosis is key to success with breast cancer. And we find a lot of uninsured, underinsured um, individuals, men and women, um, mostly women, who um, don't know where to turn to to get a mammogram. They don't have the funds to do it, and we use our monies that are raised and donated here. Uh, they all stay local, and we use those to fund diagnostic mammograms and follow-up treatment and help them out uh, very much. So um, we are most excited again and honored for the invitation to be here for the proclamation for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. 
Very so. good. If I could invite the ladies come forward and we can have, I can actually give you the proclamation and we can have a picture taken, please. Coming right straight from there, that's probably where this dress probably was going. <laughs> we were setting up tables and chairs for the display, you know, the vendors and um, setting up coffee and all that stuff. Thank you once again. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go to the recognition of citizens for their support in National Night Out. National Night Out is one of our five community events. Uh, each year we have hundreds of students that come in with their parents into Chavano Park to participate in our poster contest, um, hundreds including the parents and the other family members and that sort. And then we also have several hundred citizens that will show up and the, differing, the different neighborhood events across the city. Uh, tonight we have three of the sponsors who are here with us this evening and we want to bring them each forward to receive their proclamations. Um, first, if I could have Lori and Sean Fanning come forward. <laughs> they were here last month. Congratulations. Hey. 
And then there is the kingpin of all sponsors for our community <laughs> events in Chavano <laughs> Park. And that is Whataburger. Now, I don't know if you all have enjoyed Whataburger this week, but you should have because I have to enjoy Whataburger every single week. I, I think we should have an ordinance that says that about the entire community. Uh, they love our children and they love the people in Chavano Park. This year, they gave away three gift baskets for Whataburger for a year to the students participating in the Blattman Poster Contest. And I know that those kids compete just to get the, the special mustard and the fancy mustard. The socks are absolutely awesome. But the fathers who attended said that they really appreciated having Whataburger for a year and having their children actually provide a meal for the family. God bless Whataburger for putting those children in the hearts of their fathers. And so today, we have Lindsay Barscom, who has come, who is the local manager. And Lindsay, I have a proclamation for you, and I have a, uh, a small token of our appreciation. <laughs> if you'd come forward and receive this. I just want to interrupt here and say that uh, on Tuesday morning, I was going to take my granddaughter to breakfast anywhere she wanted to go, to the Magnolia House, IHOP. Where do we go? Whataburger. Pancake platter, too. Got them. Perfect. Thank you. Well, uh, also one other anecdotal comment. After we finished off the National Night Out, um, I had not had time to actually stop and ha enjoy any of Conrad's brisket this year. And I wound up at Whataburger at about 9 o'clock, and I ran into the assistant manager who said, oh, yes, we had a great time uh, in Chavano Park. And uh, by the way, we had several families come in with their $20 Whataburger gift cards because they had won the early submission contest. And some of those children actually bought their family that meal that evening. So, you know, they, it was like, oh, this is kind of heartwarming that uh, the families have enjoyed this gift from Whataburger so quickly. Thank you for being a blessing to our community, Lindsay. Okay, uh, brings us to item six. All matters listed in this item are considered routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be Separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired by any alderman on any item, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Do we have a motion to accept and or approve items 6.1 through 6.6? .6? So moved. We have a motion from Maggie. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Lee. There being no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries 5-0. Item number seven, all matters listed under this item are considered routine by the city council and will only be considered at the request of one or more aldermen. Coincident with each item listed, discussion will generally occur. Does anybody want to have a discussion of any of items 7.1 through 7.6? There being no discussion for, request for a discussion brings us to item number eight, regular agenda items. Item 8.1, discussion phase 1A and phase 1B street projects update. Bill, I'm going to recognize you and Chris as our presenters. Do you want to start, Bill? Yeah, go ahead, Chris. So as you all are aware, we're reconstructing streets. Um, Wagon Trail and Ingate um, have the first lift of asphalt down. Um, they're preparing it right now to do the final lift of asphalt. Um, you'll see them out there placing topsoil. Um, and they'll be doing seed here in the next couple of weeks. Um, on the 300 block of uh, Fawn Drive, they have done the cement stabilization of the subgrade. Um, and they're going to start cutting the, the curbs in there, 
hopefully this week, weather permitting, um, next week for sure, if, if the weather doesn't work out this week. Um, on Chimney Rock, they have installed the erosion control. Um, I was out there this afternoon, it looks good. And again, they plan on starting excavation on Chimney Rock, um, hopefully as early as Wednesday. Um, but again, depending on weather and crews, it may be next Monday before they start. Um, and that's my update on what's going on. <laughs> okay, Bill, um, do you have anything else? Yeah, I'll just kind of attach a few, uh, talk a little bit. CPS we thought was all was complete, and then um, they came back and said, oh, we, we, we got an alibi, we missed a gas line, and it happens to go right through near the intersection of Wagon Trail and Chavano. <laughs> and so we're pushing for CPS to get that work done so that it won't hold up anything with um, the second coat of asphalt on Wagon Trail. Um, the contractors, frankly, have been going slow. They've had, for the most part, one crew there. Uh, uh, last week they had, for periods of time, two crew, and then it went to one crew. Uh, I saw two crew out there uh, today when I went out there. But it's uh, painstakingly slow in terms of getting the shoulders and of the right-of-way cleaned of rock and prepared and having the swell um, cut so the swell is at four inches, and some of those places had to be developed. And, and so that's where they are. They, they, but the plan is, is to get the swells done, the rocks cleaned up, the, uh, the mailboxes have to be reinstalled, the topsoil in place, and then the seed put down. And the, what, the meetings we've had have been emphasizing the fact that they need to get wagon trail done before they begin moving forward in maybe on Chimney Rock because, you know, while there's some different crews associated with the different activities, there's a different crew that does the excavation and a different crew that does the lime stabilization. The fact that they only got one general purpose construction crew, a cleanup crew, and now two has been a a hindrance and so the emphasis of the meeting on Thursday was hey look get the, the job done on these streets before you get too spread out and, and moving along so they're, they're semi focused on that because the two crews I saw today were on wagon trail um, in gates mostly done but they still got some cleanup to do with there a little bit and uh, and then that would not stop them per se from putting out the asphalt on, on Fawn 200 block. And then there's some question as to maintaining the moisture level and what applications they're going to do that. Chris and I were talking earlier about um, our street inspector from Pape Dawson has recommended that we put a, a, uh, a seal coat on it to retain the moisture in it uh, while we're waiting for the asphalt. Um, the contractor wants to just water it every day Chris and I have agreed that we should just water it because we don't want to put tar on there like a seal coat that will actually require us to paint everyone's, clean everyone's cars and do all that stuff. And with the rain coming, um, that should in itself be a, a contributing to the moisture level that's required to be in there as it's going on. So it's, um, the difference in the, uh, you know, the big issue with Wagon Trail and Ingate was there was so much rock that the sequence of events had to be adjusted and then it was kind of a slow process with RFIs and all these other decisions that had to be made. The one thing I will tell you when they went and they excavated uh, Fawn 200 block, it was almost all clay just as the, the geo survey um, said and there was some rock that was able to be removed and they, st they clay stabilized, um, they concrete stabilized the entire thing. So every street's going to be different, and we're going to have to discover it as we're moving along. And parts of the streets, we even got to in Fawn, initially we thought we were going to do the first 150 feet with, with just no, no, no concrete stabilizer. We're just going to put it right on rock. Further testing showed that now there was mostly clay. We need to remove the small rocks that were there. We were able to do that and get that done. So... Um, 
there are some complications into this. It's not as easy as you might have thought um, if you were just coming in to do brand new construction. Okay, uh, question, question, Bill. Uh, are we putting down asphalt first, or are we putting down the uh, ribbon curbs, the header curbs? First? On wagon trail, they're going to do uh, the asphalt first, then come back and do the curbs. On fawn. On, yeah, on fawn. The okay. first layer of asphalt will go. Then they'll do the curbs, and then they'll do the second layer of asphalt, the final thing once they got the curbs done. Okay. Very good. Uh, now, one uh, B. Do we have any thing of note on De Zavala? Um, nothing's really changed on the De Zavala project. Um, we we hit pause a couple of months ago, um, pending the the HUD funding um, application, because um, we didn't want to get too far ahead prior to the funding formally being approved. Right now, there's an earmark that's been approved, but the actual grant has not billed correctly, if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, that's right. We have yeah. to apply for the HUD. We have purposely not done it. We've got a lot of things moving on. And phase 1C needs to be developed. So again, 1C is going to be what excess funds do we have from the Days of Allah project? What excess funds do we have from the um, phase 1 alpha project? We'll probably... Um, put something together in the next week or two in which just has um, examples. Okay, so Cinnamon Oak, Post Oak Way, we need to get an estimate on that. We can throw that in there and then maybe do uh, do do a, uh, maybe, maybe a street assessment could be thrown in there. Maybe uh, another streets and you know, part of the agenda tonight is an on-call engineering firm. We're looking at maybe then um, entering into contract with them to do a street assessment, and then that could help us inform whether we wait until that's complete or not. We still have to do some coordination and, and sort out. But it's not that terribly complicated, but we don't want to apply for the grant and then have to go redo it. We want to make sure we get it right the first time. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions, comments? Pete? Chris, any, any cost adjustments so far that have been requested? I'm sorry? Any cost adjustments that have been requested from the contractor? Change order one was a deduct. Um, I'd be lying to you if I told you I remembered how much that was. Uh, change order two actually just got revised this morning. They sent it to me. Um, that one, they were originally asking $7,500. Um, and that was reduced to 2500 or 2300 um, this morning. And that's to do the concrete over the fiber optic line near the uh, firehouse. Um, there is a, a third change order that's been submitted um, for the additional rock that they encountered on wagon trail and end gate. It actually deducts the cement stabilization that we didn't do, but then it adds for the rock. Um, that one we're still negotiating with the contractor. Um, I asked them for backup on it this afternoon. What potentially could we be looking at? It was either and just, just a ballpark. It, it, Twenty-five thousand is what that one was. Yeah. Nothing in the grand scheme of things that's you know that significant. Now, if every other one of these roads needs a change order of twenty-five thousand, now we saw that Fawn, that one section of Fawn, did not. But uh, we'll have to see. Okay. And again, I'm the city rep, so I'm negotiating down with them. So we'll see where it ends up. Okay, Conrad. I'm just curious about the timeline. Have we moved a, a month out from original, or where, kind of where are we on that? I'll be honest. I am not sure. I haven't looked at the schedule in the last couple of weeks. Um, we are behind schedule. Um, I do think some things are moving along faster now that we've kind of identified the process. You know, as we excavate streets, and um, I mean, when they opened up Fawn, I mean, it was a day or two. We had made a decision on you know, cement versus no cement. Um, on wagon trail, that process took two weeks to get everybody on the same page, maybe even longer than that. Um, so they are speeding up, but it is it is behind. They're still within the, the time frame we gave them. They aren't within the time frame they said they could get it done. Yeah, they were on a 10 month or something like that timeline, crazy. And then we, we had an 18 month, and so they're, they're pushing towards that 18 month, so we'll see. Okay, anybody else? Now, we do have one more slide here. Um, okay. I wanted to talk about the water re line relocation. 
And just so you're tracking, this is on the Northwest Military Highway, okay? So all the other water crew service updates on phase one alpha from the city standpoint is all complete. But uh, you might recall that uh, on Northwest Military Highway, TxDOT contracted a big portion of those lines to be replaced uh, with, because it was in conflict with our Northwest Military Highway. There were two sections under Brandon Peterson's watch where they went ahead and they were small sections and there was a gap between PVC where there was AC lines and we actually uh, replaced those two sections. So what you see on the left-hand map is everything from City Hall all the way to 16 to Wagon Trail is all blue, that's PVC. And then you see below that there's actually two sections of, um, there's three sections of AC pipe that remains. There's the section between uh, Fawn and Windmill, and then there's another section down at the very bottom that's just north of Bent Oak. Right now what we've got is we've got a permit in with TxDOT to uh, get authorization, because we're working in there right away to replace the two smaller sections. So that would only leave one contiguous uh, um, section of AC pipe that's there. It's a little bit complicated because there's new driveways and all that stuff that's there. The pipe is okay, it's in, it's in good shape, but we're trying to minimize the PVC to AC to PVC to AC to PVC to AC, and we have this accurately mapped. And the slide before says uh, the, that after we get this completed, there's a 350 foot section, a 240 foot section. We've got the parts already ordered and approved. We will only have 1,100 feet left on on Northwest Military Highway to be done at a later time. And okay. I think that's the last slide. Right? Pete, what's the size of that line, Bill? The size of the line, uh, Johnny could probably answer that one. To the, to the best of our knowledge, it's mostly six inch AC. Uh, so we're gonna go with six on six. Uh, we're gonna, put, we're gonna, it's about 45 day wait to go through the rawless, pro, rawless process, which is the new software through TxDOT. And as soon as that gets approved, they're, they're telling me the squeaky wheel gets agreed, so I've been calling them every other day so we can get our approval a little bit sooner. So once we get that approved, my goal is to get it done, get in there and get the two short sides done well before they finish Northwest Military to look a little more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, and the 1,100-foot section, we're looking to do that uh, shortly after we get done with the cul-de-sac. So we'll, we'll start this job, we'll do the two shorts, we'll we'll get ahead of D&D &D on the cul-de-sacs and then we'll jump back over to uh, the 1100 foot section, which it's, it's a toss up whether we're gonna contract it out or do it in-house. The guys are really, really excited about doing it in-house, so we may we may do it in-house. Uh, any crossings that we do do with driveways, we'll be putting a casing through there for future just in case something does happen. It's not if something breaks, it's when it breaks. Uh, we'll be able to pull it out and replace it without causing any structural damage to any of the residents that are in that area as well. Hey, Johnny, what, what's the depth on that? Uh, currently, it's about sitting three foot deep, uh, right where they're at. Uh, three foot deep, right where it's at, and we're actually going to be laying it in place. So we'll be laying it at the exact depth that we're at. Uh, nothing too crazy. It's kind of in and out type of job. Okay. Anybody else? I have okay. a question. Maggie? Uh, I'm going to go back to where uh, you feel like they're a little bit behind time. Is this something we should be worried about? I'm hearing that maybe they were too ambitious <laughs> on setting the first deadline. So are we okay, or is it something we should be looking into or alarmed about that they're behind? Or I don't think it's anything to be worried about. I do believe their original schedule, schedule was very aggressive. Um, you know, when we looked at the work that was required, we thought it was 18 months worth of work. They came in and said they could do it in almost half that time, 10 months. Right. Um, and so at this point, I'm not concerned about the schedule. I mean, obviously we'd like them to do it faster, um, and we are pushing them yeah. to do it faster, but we want it done right. <laughs> we, we want it done right. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's a balancing act at this okay. point. So we're, so we're really okay with that. I, I think we're okay. It's not something we need to look into. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Chris, thank you very much. Okay. We appreciate it. Uh, brings us to item 8.2, discussion action approval of up to three contractors for the city's request for qualification. 
for on-call engineering services? Bill? So um, we informed you last month we had released an R a request for qualifications for on-call engineering services. Most cities have uh, several engineering firms. They have a primary city engineer and that has capabilities, and then they have other, uh, other firms that they rotate and or they use niche uh, services here. Uh, and, and, and so um, we released a request for qualifications. We got eight bids in. Um, almost all of these are very reputable firms, to be frank with you. Um, we, we did create a scoring sheet, and uh, we based the criteria on the for firm's ability to provide quality municipal engineering services at a reasonable cost. Part of that is really kind of hard to, to gauge since we don't get cost, uh, we, we don't get the pricing associated with that, but we um, look at their package, we make a, a, a judgment. The firm's exper experience and expertise in engineering services uh, listed in our qualifications. So we listed some types of projects we might go to, you know, a water uh, hydrology model, um, street assessments and design and things like that. One of the things we're trying to do is a street design manual. Uh, there was uh, a third criteria, primary experience and qualifications and references. So everyone had good references for the most part. We were able to talk to some folks that knew some of these firms and you know there were some differences in how we scored in that. But um, essentially, uh, we had three firms that, that came up on top. They coincidentally had the same um, total score. Uh, and in all seriousness, that was a coincidence because the primary evaluators were Curtis and I, and we were fairly similar on most of our evaluations, but they, we were different on almost every one of the different things, and they just kind of leveled each other off. But the, the three firms that we're recommending are uh, Freeland Turk Engi and Turk Engineering, Hoff Engineering, and uh, Lock Lockwood, Andrews, and... Newman for, for that. And all of these companies do municipal engineering. And some of them are, you know, Free, uh, Freeland Turk is a very small firm. We think there's advantages to having a very small firm because if they're not overworked, they're very re responsive and they can react very quickly. And then you've got um, uh, very large firms with with the medium capability here in San Antonio, and then you even even in with Hoff Engineering, you have a large presence here with lots of assets that that can be done. So, you, you we've kind of got a small, medium, and large augmented with uh, call your engineering. I think we're going to really um, have some. Uh, we don't have a lot of projects. I mean, to be honest, I mean it's not like we're going to be doing one a year for each one of these companies, but we want options, and so we'll. Figure out what the project is. We'll do some research, find out what their capabilities are. Then we'll ask a particular firm for a bid, and then we'll get a bid, and, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have a motion to approve up to three contractors? And if you would name the contractors for the city's request for qualifications for on-call engineering services. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Okay. Um, buddy, which uh, firms or uh, which ones would you recommend? I don't have a list. Uh, Holoff Engineering, Lockwood Andrews and Newman, and uh, Freeland Turk Engineering. Okay, we have a motion to approve the firms of Hoff Engineering, Lockwood Andrews and Newman. Freeman Turk Engineering for the award of on-call engineering services under a request for qualifications and authorize the city manager to enter into a contract negotiation with these firms. We have a second. Second. We have a second from Lee. We're now open for discussion. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries 5-0. Item 8.3, Discussion Action Ordinance 02023017, amending Chapter 6, Building and Building Regulations to establish procedures for the abatement of substandard structures under Local Government Code Section 214. This is a first reading bill. 
Yeah, this is a combined effort uh, initiated by the uh, chief of police, actually. Curtis uh, did a great job of Chavano park -izing it. We sent it to the city attorney, who then further refined it. And so it's been quite a process. Curtis has developed a nifty little flow chart, which I think explains it. And I'm going to turn it over to Curtis. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Mayor and Council. All right, so this is a substandard building abatement ordinance. So just to clarify right up front, this is not granting the city any new power. This is a power that the state law grants us under Section 214. You can see there. But what this does is establish a process for us to enact that power um, without an ordinance that establishes the process, much similar to the abatement of junk vehicles that we did this past spring we can't actually go through this process. So the city has, just to review, we have adopted a num numerous building codes, fire code, all those displayed up there are actually ones that the city enforces today, the 2018 International Building Codes, the fire code, and the 2017 National Electric Code. Next slide. And so while those codes have already in them processes for plan review and authority and processes for plan review, inspection, stop work orders, and issue a citation, for non-compliance with them, there's nothing in them when it deals with a structure that is um, this very specific in law, that is, um, and they're specific in ordinance, but it's lapidated, it has become housing for criminal activities, all sorts of things that are kind of outside the scope necessarily of very narrow building codes. So this process, the building official, which is a city manager designee, but in function that's going to be the building inspector who we have contracted out, BB Inspections, or the Fire Marshal, Daryl Dover here, they, um, they do their normal plan review inspections, and generally, all the time, the structure owner of the contract comes to compliance with the Fire Marshal's uh, inspection and so forth. And certain, and new, what this ordinance establishes is everything to the right here for the audience. So the building official, the fire marshal, determines that the building is, is substandard. They can take three actions. They issue a notice for it must be repaired or demolished. They secure the building. Or they can recommend that proceedings for the new board that established the building standards board. This new board we have set to be co-appointed and co-termed with the board of adjustments. So when the council appoints the board of adjustment, you are functionally appointing the building standards board, which is exactly how the junk vehicle board of appeals is done. It is not a new set of people you are appointing. If the, the structure owner, when they get that notice, they can come into compliance and then everything is fine. If they refuse to come into compliance, then the abatement proceedings can start with the Building Standards Board. There is a public hearing. There is public notice. The ordinance is very specific on how the notice is given, how many days in advance. That board convenes. They have their public hearing. Both parties are given to speak, much similar to a Board of uh, Appeals for a zoning variance, and the board, the, um, the board can decide that they don't support the building inspector or the fire marshal's recommendations, and they don't support the recommendations, and then nothing happens. But if they do support it, they can require that the repairs are done. Either the city goes and do it themselves, and then the cost is passed on through a lien or some other legal mechanism onto that homeowner if they. Uh, not homes, you can't do homes in Texas Constitution, but businesses. Um, they, they order a vacation of the structure, demolish the structure, the building be secured, occupants be relocated. And then, of course, there are still always, the board decisions can be appealed to a court of civil jurisdiction. So um, that concludes my presentation. If you have any more legal specific questions, we have Valerie here to help on that. Okay, thank you, Chris. I think that when we think of this, it's called condemnation. It's about a building condemnation. Uh, do we have a motion to approve Ordinance O 2023-017, amending Chapter 6, Building and Building Regulations, to establish procedures for the abatement of substandard structures under Local Government Code Chapter 214? We have a motion from Lee. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Conrad. We're now open for discussion. Lee. I, th I think it would be helpful uh, in this process if the Second one on the top, building official fire marshal determines. It might be uh, prudent if we ex explain what bullet number uh, number two stands for, secure the building, what that entails. I don't, I do not know if the ordinance exactly s defines what secure the building is means, but 
But of course, that could mean, um, I think they typically put a lock on the door, don't they? It's a removal of people and, and items and the securing of the building against re-entry. Yes, yeah, so the, uh, the, the, the old church property at one point in time was declared substandard by the fire marshal. And um, of course, there wasn't anybody in it at the time, but he locked it with a chain and he has then secured it. Then we would periodically go by the police to make sure it wasn't being occupied again. Now, in, in that case, what they did is they brought junk to it and they were not occupying the inside. And that took us a while to get that sorted out, but yes, that uh, that's what we would do. That's what I understand has been done, at least in Chaffinal Park. Right, it's, it's, a, it's a process. And I just want to make sure everybody understands on council that this does carry some weight in the removal of persons. And when you start doing removal of people, it gets into a whole nother arena. Uh, but this should cover it in, in my estimate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns? There being no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries 5-0. Municipal Court, uh, item number 8.4, Discussion Action Ordinance 0 020 amending Chapter 10, Court to amend Municipal Court Jurisdiction. This is a first reading. Bill. Uh, Texas Local Government Code, Section uh, 30.0003, authorizes the governing body to create a Municipal Court record, which we did um, about a year ago. And uh, in that, we had different... Uh, there's a lot of different language associated with that, a lot of tweaks that were made. Um, it has been brought to our attention that Section 10-2, which is titled Jurisdiction, needed a little bit of tweaking. So we worked with our attorneys, and they, they made some recommended changes associated with that. Um, and you could kind of see here, it's, fa it's fairly simple but it just allows us to, the court should have jurisdiction by the general law for municipal courts, and we added in there, uh, in, you know, with the provisions, as you can see. Valerie can probably explain it better than me. One of the things we did do was we eliminated some of the specifics in Section B, which might have caused some confusion as well. We left it more general. So... Um, I don't know, Valerie, if you wanted to m mention anything about that and what uh, you might do. We'll need so the main thing that we did was- uh, Valerie, you're, you're not actually on the mic. Got to move. Oh. Okay, so the main thing that we did was by removing specific statutes that are crossed out, we've made it to more of a catch-all, so in case there's any like legislative updates or changes, We've, we're covered and we're not going to have to constantly have to uh, update this ordinance. Any power that is granted to a municipal court of record, we have granted to our municipal court here in Chavano Park. It's basically what that change is saying. Okay. So it's a clarification of jurisdictional authority for our court to not necessarily enhance it, but to clarify for the community at large, for attorneys and for our judge concerning what is there. Okay, Conrad, uh, do we have a motion? To now, one other thing, Mayor, yeah. I just wanted to just remind you, you're probably already on it, but we consider making this, uh, recommending this be an administrative uh, ordinance in itself, but uh, what the staff is recommending is that we uh, use the other uh, method for only doing one reading, which is a requirement for the second reading being waived if it's by unanimous vote by the city council. Okay, so I'll entertain that motion. Conrad? No, just right there. Thanks. So I'd like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 0 2023 020, amending Chapter 10. We court to amend the municipal court uh, jurisdiction. First reading. Yes. And in that the requirement for the second reading be waived by unanimous vote, but the second vote is unnecessary. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to approve Ordinance 0 2023 amending Chapter 10, Court to Amend Municipal Court Jurisdiction, and that the requirement of a second reading is waived by unanimous vote as a second vote is unnecessary. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, do we have any discussion? Okay. 
Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries 5-0. Brings us to item number, um, and at this time I'm going to execute that ordinance. Brings us to item number 8.5, discussion action, ordinance O-2023-019, amending chapter 20 offenses and miscellaneous provisions, article two, nuisances. Bill. Yeah, so this is all about uh, article two nuisances and our, um, our ordinance that governs offenses and uh, miscellaneous provisions. And that authority is given to us from Chapter 217, the Local Government Code. It authorizes us to define and declare what constitutes a nuisance and to authorize and direct the summary abatement of that nuisance in any manner the city wishes, to, considers expedient, and, and also to punish by fine any person responsible for no, such nuisance. And then we've got the Health and Safety Code, which uh, Section 3. 42, which also, also authorizes the governing body of a municipality to require a owner of a lot in a municipal in a city to keep it free from weeds, rubbish, brush, and other objectionable, unsightly, and unsanitary manners. We previously enacted these ordinances, and again, it was pointed out to us that we might need to clarify and adjust some of the language associated with that, um, and specifically Section 20. Dash 26, which is the injunction and other relief uh, um, in, in case there is one of these offenses that's occurred. And so you can see it's again, it's a fairly simple amount of amendments. So again, the key point is that we're be, upon being authorized by city council, we're, we're removing the requirement that it be authorized by ordinance. And then we added in the sentence in here, which basically talks about um, civil enforcement suits, and Valerie would probably be better um, suited to uh, explain the specifics of that. And I would uh, only point out that, like the previous ordinance, we consider this administrative because it's really just dealing with the language, but just to be clear, we, uh, we're, we're recommending the second reading be waived by a unanimous vote if that is occurred. Okay, and so this is another clarification of jurisdiction and the authority that our court has for both criminal enforcement of our ordinances and a civil application as well. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance O-2023-019, amending Chapter 20, Offenses and Miscellaneous Provisions, Article 2. Conrad? So present a motion to approve ordinance O-2023-019, amending chapter 20, offenses and miscellaneous provisions, article two, nuisances, first reading, and that the requirement for the second reading be waived by unanimous vote as a second vote is unnecessary. Okay, we have a motion from Conrad. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Maggie. We're now open <coughs> for discussion. There being no discussion, we have a motion to approve ordinance O-2023-019, amending chapter 20 offenses and miscellaneous provisions, article two nuisances, and that the requirement for a second reading is waived on a unanimous vote as a second vote is unnecessary. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries 5-0. Brings us to item 8.6, discussion action, setting the dates for city sponsored events, citywide garage sale, Arbor, Earth Day, Independence Day, National Night Out, Drunk or Treat, Holiday Festival. Kristen. So I'm gonna I'll run through this. She and I talked, she did most of the work, but uh, I don't think it'll be fairly simple. This is gonna be fairly simple. So if you go to the next slide. The first one is, is a potential garage sale. And so I just wanna point out that you, 
what we have in between the potential dates that are highlighted in purple is you've got the uh, Northside ISD spring break, and then on the back side of that, the, the week on, on the date of the 29th, you've got Good Friday, which is a city holiday. So staff's two dates that we're looking at are the 16th and the 23rd. There's probably advantages, pros and, pros and cons to each one of those. If uh, from the resident standpoint, they probably don't have a lot of kids in uh, spring break, but that uh, gives them time. If, if you did, if you were not traveling, you could prepare for your garage sale, which everyone knows if it's done one, that that's the hardest thing to do. But, uh, you know, if there's people traveling, maybe you don't want to do it on the weekend of uh, spring break and you could do it uh, the, the week of the 23rd. Uh, so, I don't know that we have a strong recommendation either way. I think either one would be fine. Um, we're looking at Arbor Day mid-April, uh, so there's enough time for the staff, if you were to do it the 23rd, where it wouldn't cram two events, you know, in, in three weeks. So, who wants to do the 23rd and who wants to do the 16th? Are there any religious holidays on either the 16th or the 23rd that you're aware of? Anything associated with Palm Sunday that might interfere? Uh, Palm Sunday is the 24th, right. and the uh, and so that would be after the uh, garage sale. The day after garage sale is Palm Sunday. Right. So I, I'd recommend we do it on the 16th. And and I don't know if anybody actually is. Um, Looking to be in town for this, it's, uh, it's much more important to everybody that's looking at, um, <clears throat> at selling their stuff. And uh, the number one goal in selling your stuff is to have a weekend where it's going to shine. So, Pete, are you telling us that March the 16th is going to be the sunshine date, or do we want to have uh, the 16th and an alternate date of the 23rd in the event that we declare a rain out? If you do it to the 16th, then you can always back That's to the right. 23rd. That's right. I'm just asking that we can advertise for the 16th, as Pete has suggested, that, that and that we exact, have a... That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. That, that's what I thought you were looking for. Okay. So, so let, let, let's, let's, go to the next, let's go to the next event, Arbor Day. Bill. Thank you, Pete. Okay. So you can see you have a, a week, in, the first week in April, which is clear of anything that we know of. And, but more importantly, fest, Fiesta starts the 18th. And um, all the parades, the big parades in the city holiday is the 26th, the Battle of Flowers is the 26th, the Flambeau parade is the 27th. So we think that we could either do it the 13th or the 20th. I don't know that there's that many uh, conflicting events on the 20th, but there are a number of Fiesta events that happen on the 20th. I just don't know which ones they are now. If we wanted to stay completely clear of Fiesta, we could do it before, the, then it would be the 13th, and there's no issue with staff on either one of these days. 13th probably makes more sense, but we can do either one of them. Okay. Yeah. And Passover is the 22nd to the 30th, so it's not a conflict for either date on Passover. Um, who wants to do the 13th? 13th sounds great. Okay, Bill. Yeah. Okay. Next uh, is, the, is the Independence Day celebration. We typically do it the Saturday before. Um, and if you'll go to July just to see where that is, Independence Day is the 4th. So the Saturday before, if you go back to June, would actually be the June 29th. Now, normally we do these and it just happens to fall on the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, sometimes the 4th of July. In this case, it would be the tail end of June. We've done that in the past. It hasn't had a big impact. We recommend we continue to do it, and we're, we're recommending the 29th. Okay, which would be consistent with our prior practice. Anyone have an object objection? That seems no. early, but no, uh, otherwise, uh, you wind up trying to bring people in on July the 4th, and they're not very good about showing up on July the 4th. Exactly. Okay, okay we'll go to October. Okay. Good news about this is we, Javano Park as well as uh, TCMA and a number of organizations have been trying to coach 
TML not to have their conference in the first week of October, which always conflicts with National Night Out. The issue in, in the past has been that they set these contracts and they compete them four or five years out. They finally have got through that cycle to where the TML conference is going to be the 9th through the 11th um, next year. And we traditionally uh, do our National Night Out when Texas does it, which would be the 1st of October on uh, this next year. So that seems to be a no-brainer. Okay. October the 1st. Conrad? If I could just make a, I'm just throwing this out there. But it's, it's usually, it's a hot week, even at, at that time of the day. But um, we had one person not be able to stay there because it was too hot. Um, and um, just give some thought on that if, if it's possible to move that. But I'm not asking for that, just a thought. Anybody wants to discuss it, maybe for. I think you need to just put yours underneath the garage and open the kitchen door and let the air conditioning. <laughs> I cool submit an invoice for that. Get a, you you uh, absolutely uh, may submit an invoice, okay. and, no, and, and, we'll, yeah. and 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 Brenda will give it all the consideration that it is no, I due. Know, I know where it's. <laughs> yes, the circular file cabinet. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Trunk okay. or treat. December. Oh, Trunk or Treat, that's right, that's right. Um, that's we've been good. doing it the Sunday prior to Halloween. In this case, it's going to be four days in advance if you did it on Sunday the uh, 27th. In the past, we have considered doing it on Halloween, but that's a school night usually, and so we've defaulted to the Sunday. And, you know, if the last two Trunk or Treats are an indication, it's been very successful participation exactly what we wanted we achieved our uh, our goals it was fantastic and i think that's the right thing to do okay any objections there'd be no objections bill and December. holiday festival again we we do that uh, the first saturday in december this is on the 7th which is later than we've normally done i don't think that's a bad thing there may be some other events that conflict in that um, but um, you know might be a little bit cooler and it'll be a little bit darker, but, no. but no significant difference whether that's the first, the fourth, or the seventh. That's been a good uh, activity date for us, and we've been very successful. Good. Okay, just a second. Okay. So we can we could publish this on the city's website. So go to the next slide. Okay. That kind of gives you some. I think we 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 said the sixteenth, uh, the third. Um, I think we're ready. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the proposed dates for the city sponsored events, the garage sale being March the thirteenth with an alternate date of the twenty third, a rain date of the twenty third, Arbor Day, Earth Day, April the thirteenth, Independence Day. June 29th, National Night Out, October 1st, Trunk or Treat, October 27th, and the holiday event, December the 7th. Do we have a motion? The, the garage date is March the 16th with a rain date of the 23rd. So moved. We have a motion second. from Maggie. We have a second from Pete. There being no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign, the motion carries. Uh, brings us to item 8.1, discussion. City Council will meet in closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551071 to seek the advice of an attorney about pending or contemplated lit litigation to wit cause number 2023C111 I11764 Herbert Austin versus the City of Chavano Park, Texas, and the Board of Adjustment for the City of Chavano Park, Texas, on all matters pending and contemplated in connection therewith. Uh, this will not require the continued presence of administrative staff beyond our assistant city manager. And so thank you all for your presence this evening. Yes, sir. Eight point seven, yes. I'm sorry, eight point seven. Thank you. 
Okay, it is now 742 and we're going to go to executive session. It is now 841 and we've opened the doors back up. We are closing our, we have closed our executive session, uh, which the city house, the city council has held pursuant to Texas government code section 551071 to seek the advice of an attorney about pending and contemplated litigation to with case cause number 2023 CI 11764 Herbert Austin versus the city of Chavano Park and all uh, and the Board of Adjustments of the City of Chavano Park and all other matters pending and contemplating in connection therewith. Brings us to item number nine. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. We have a mo mo motion from Lee and a second from Maggie. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned.